Part of winning the business is not making a lot of money on it. Yeah. <laughs> That's more the volume. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so, the, so the deal here is now we're getting into doing, as part of our uh, turnkey engine program, or crate engine, whatever you want to call them, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to do hybrids as well. That's super cool. And the hybrid motor generator we're looking at doing, and we're actually working on it right now, makes 536 horsepower on its own. Jeez. <laughs> so, so add that number to the yeah. engine. Wow. Yeah, and you suddenly have... You know, you, no tires you, left. Well, <laughs> guys talk about turbo leg. I call it torque fill. You want some more out of the hole or from a throttle transient, you need torque fill. That's a lot of torque fill, that motor setup. So, so it's... I'm excited about it. You can tell I'm excited yeah. about it. <laughs> we build a lot of headers, but they're all jigged. You know, we build headers for Jeeps, Chevy 5.3s. I mean, there's stuff I forgot we were building. Stuff. <laughs> uh, but as long as you're, yeah. yeah, oh, lots yeah. of V10s. Yeah. This whole deal, uh, you helping us out is huge. It might not be the last time. I would love that. Knock on your door. <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, thinking. we've got some skilled fabricators here. There's no two ways about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but imagining a set of headers, I know what that is because I had to do it for decades, you know? Yeah. I get uh, visualizing. You look at the thing, you, and then you start putting stuff in the air. <laughs> Anymore, they have tools where you just take this thing and you bend that and it's all plastic and it's from, I don't I never know. used it. <laughs> yeah, I just didn't think you did. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. totally get that. We did, the first set of headers we built in CAD was for Size Matters 2. It was this uh, Freightliner with a Detroit diesel that we ran at Pikes Peak. And we built he headers to the turbo. Uh, so... The tuning's different when the air density or the exhaust density is higher. The speed of sound within the tube changes. You know, it's like at different altitudes, you have different speeds of sound. Mm -hmm. uh, here's like you're going down in the ground in a mine. You know, the air pressure gets higher and higher and higher. Everything is tunable, even if you're running turbos. And guys run a lot of headers with turbos. I'm not sure that they're really totally scienced out. They're beautiful, a lot of them. But I'm not sure that the physics of what's going on has been optimized. I don't think so. I think most people are following, you know. Traditional. Yeah. yeah I know. Yeah. But it. It doesn't. Traditional, you exhaust the atmosphere, yeah. you know. But once again, if you compress it and the density is higher, speed of sound changes. Uh, and the mass flow is higher. I mean, if you, if you triple the horsepower of the engine, that's three times the, the air. Yeah. So, anyhow, this is so, so interesting. It's, it's one of these things where this is a, over a beer discussion or maybe more than one beer <laughs> where you yeah. really get some yeah. sketching stuff out. But uh, we just met each other. <laughs> There's always time for that. Let me drive you nuts. <laughs> Gail, you mentioned two things while you were talking to him that I wanted to circle back to. Okay. Uh, one was that hopefully we can do some more stuff in the future, and two was the crate engine program. Yes. And Lockjaw is kind of our introductory vehicle for the bank's Duramax crate engine program. Absolutely. And this is going to have our what would be our stage one engine, which is supercharged diesel. Yes. Mm -hmm. But looking forward a few months, we are also getting ready for our stage three crate engine, which talking about elevation change mm -hmm. is gonna go to the top of Pikes Peak. Yeah, okay. so 9,400 feet at the start, 12.8 miles, 156 turns, Elevation change of almost 5,000, almost a mi mile of it. So you start at 9,400, you end at 14,110. You're already starting pretty high altitude. Yeah, yeah you're starting high. And, yeah. yeah, now we've done this three times. Once with a diesel, 
and twice with the 440-inch uh, SB2 straight methanol uh, in an open wheeled, like an Indy car. Yeah. So we qualified number one two years in a row with, with that setup, and then we twisted off an axle, a half shaft on the start one year, and the second second year he went into the trees, which is not a not good. Yeah. But we're going Anyhow, back. Yes. We're going back and we're gonna we're taking our type R race truck and we are going to take the engine out of that truck that it's had in it for quite a while and we are going to put an L five P based Duramax in it. And we have been debating yeah. does it get super turbo, does it get twin turbo, is it compounded? What what is what's going to be what is that up? going to be? Yeah. But whatever it is, it's going to be gnarly. Mm -hmm. It's going to make a load of power. Yeah. And it's going to need some very custom headers on it. Be happy to do those. <laughs> you know, we're after the diesel record, but we want to run real respectable as well. Yeah. You know, for a diesel. We, we ran a button willow against open wheel gasoline powered stuff and ran within in a second of those guys with a pickup truck. Awesome. No, it's not real tall. It's not normal. It's carbon. Not your average. It's yeah. mostly carbon fiber. Not your average pickup truck. Yeah, but it is kind of heavy. Yeah, you know? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you could fit a sheet of plywood on the bed still. You might be able to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you might be able to. So, of course, the bed's got. You could use the. You could use the wing as a part of the lumber rack. Oh, <laughs> That's for the ladders. <laughs> That's Street. gonna be really cool. Stuff. Yeah. Really, yeah. What's really coming? cool up and coming stuff. I'm glad you guys are, are getting back into this because this is the fun stuff. <laughs> it is. You know, we haven't gone racing. Most of our racers have been in the NHRA museum. Uh, some of them are on the next street over. We ha have a couple of uh, industrial units over there on I own the next street over, and uh, our distribution warehouse is moving over there too. It's right behind this. So, and the rest of the campus uh, is a large building that faces Gladstone, 1234 Gladstone. And it's all of our warehousing and fulfillment, training, all of that jive is over there. Corporate library, all of it. So, there's a number of buildings. How many buildings is it? I, there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. How many buildings do we have? You've seen, you've seen the <laughs> account. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, when we're all here and we're all working, you got to come over and we'll have lunch and I'd love that. see the whole, whole yeah. thing. Well, he'll be here. Yeah. He'll be I here. definitely will. He'll be here yeah. this week. You're going to see yeah. me a lot this well, week. there yeah. is that. Uh -huh. Yeah, there is that. And then hopefully we can get the Pikes Peak truck. That'll be pretty soon. And yes. be on the lookout for that in Banks Built Season 2. <laughs> That is season two. That's season two. Yeah, absolutely. So.